Welcome to the November AMSA Board, Board of Trustees meeting. We have confirmed that we have quorum. And so as part of our agenda, we first need to call the meeting to order, which we've done. This meeting is being recorded and live streamed on the AMSA Facebook page. And next up. You have to um, call the names of the people who are here, Roger. Right. So, Sarah, would you do the honor to call the uh, call out the names of the board members in attendance? Okay. So, let me get rid of this. Did we lose Sarah? I think oh. we did. But we may have lost Sarah. Said get rid of this and then left the call. <laughs> she'll she'll be back. Um, but I, I can read off it doesn't matter who does it. So you got Raul right. Morris. But everybody or just the uh, trustees? All uh, just the trustees. So Raul Porras, Roger Jarrett, Don Capello, Nick Poyer, <laughs> Chief Michael Murphy. That's my new boss, so I apologize. I'm on the wrong Zoom account. <laughs> that would be Sheila. And Bella Gorman, Ben Hamill, uh, Jill Schaefer, Liz Saul, Mara Webster, and Salmoni Sampath, and Zach Oglesby. Did you miss anybody? Hey, Nick. Yeah, we got Nick. Where? Yep. You're on mute, Sarah. So we, so we officially announced the attendance. I believe everybody is currently online except for um, Kristen. And she said that she would be joining us when she could. So I'd like to appoint a uh, timekeeper. So volunteers to keep us on track. I can do it. Zach is official timekeeper. Um, next up, we have uh, recording attendance and guests. So Sarah is on that. And public comment. Is there anyone that wishes to partake in public comment? We did not have any emails on for anyone who was interested. I don't know if there's anyone on the line. All right. Uh, no. Last call for public comment. All right, public comment is complete. Uh, on to the vote section of the agenda. We'll, our, this is our first crack at the consent agenda. Our consent agenda tonight contains only one vote, which is the approval for the minutes. So it is um, not, not much different than an ordinary meeting. So I'm looking for um, a motion to approve the consent agenda, which is the minutes from the last meeting. So moved. Seconded by Sheila. All right, Sarah, would you call the roll, please? Uh, unmute yourself, Sarah. Thank you. Ah, yay, all right. <clears throat> Back. Uh, Bella Gorman. Yes. Ben Hamill. Yes. Don Capello. Yes. Uh, Jill Schaefer. Yes. Liz Saul. Yes. Uh, Mara Webster. Yes. Nick Poirier. Yes. Raul Porras. Yes. Roger Jarrett. Yes. Gilly Kelly. Yes. Salmini Sampath. Abstain. Abstain. Uh, Zachary Oglesby? Yes. And Kristen is absent, so that is it. All right, motion passes. And next up is the um, next up is the uh, discussion for the executive director yearly goals. Liz, would you like to uh, lead that discussion? Um, sure. I apologize. I didn't really prepare anything, but we have uh, 
finalized Ellen's goals. And I do not know, did they go out as part of the packet? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, oh, they did. Okay. Yes, they okay. did. Okay. Yep. So her goals are in the packet. So if you would like to review them, if you have any questions for um, myself or Roger and Raul, we were all involved with this. And Ellen is also more than available since she did develop her, her goals. So um, if you have any questions for any of us, if you could just take a quick minute and review those. I'm sorry, I can't find that in the packet. Can someone direct me to where that would be found? Okay, maybe it was. Was it in the packet? We're in the packet in the last board meeting with the exception of the last goal that yeah. you guys discussed. But I, if there's an update to that, it's not in this packet. Yeah, no. I thought it didn't make it to the packet. I guess not. Uh, we can we can put it on that though. Do you want to do you want to um, wait till next? Yeah, it'll be January. Yeah. Why, um, <clears throat> Ellen? Are you able to just shoot them out to everyone? Sure. Can you shoot the copy can you share out them to on the screen? If we... Or yeah, if you want to share them on the screen, that's probably that, even that's easier. that's gonna take time time to run through them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me. Uh, I'll, I'll find them first. Do we want to move on and we can come back to this item? Yeah. So All I right, don't waste time. Yeah, let, let's, uh, we're going to table this item and Ellen's going to send out the, the um, goals. And I'd like to move on to inviting Bob or Ellen to talk about the construction management at risk procurement approval. Ellen, if you want to just shoot them to me and I can take care of getting them out to everyone. Because I know okay. you've got your um, executive director update too. All right, I will do that, Liz. Yep. Um, um, as far <clears throat> okay, Bob, you all set? Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, give a little intro on an explanation of what we're doing here. So yeah, so this is um, the construction manager at risk, which uh, you know, in another terminology is our contractor, the the organization that we are looking to select, uh, uh, assumably to construct the project for us. Um, the uh, Massachusetts state law, public construction law, allows for organizations that are taking on a project larger than 5 million to go out and select, again, I'll just call it the general contractor uh, or construction manager, same, t same general idea, um, select them based on qualifications. In other words, you get the, you get the higher the contractor you like uh, and go out and really do an RFP. This allows us, us to bring them on board early while we're still developing our design drawings to get their input on cost, constructability, material lead times, um, better ideas in construction technology, how to phase it, uh, all of these things, it also allows us, as I mentioned, to, to actually phase it. So maybe we want to do a little um, a little site work over next summer before we have all the drawings completely done to go out for the, for the bids on everything else. It gives you all that kind of flexibility. And, and in my opinion, you know, again, most importantly, it allows you to go out and select who you're really going to partner with on this project based on qualifications, trusts, uh, experience, et cetera. Um, there is also a cost factor, uh, sort of uh, some competitive pricing involved. This is uh, with respect to the fee. Generally, uh, the construction manager will be paid a percentage on top of the overall project cost, 2%, 3%, 4%, that general idea. So when we go out um, to, uh, with an RFP and get the information back, we'll see what they're charging us. Same thing for what we call general conditions, which is in essence is how they're going to staff the job, how many people they think they're going to put onto it, and what they charge per week for their site superintendent or project manager. So there is some, some, uh, definitely some competitive pricing involved. Those numbers add up to, you know, 10% of the job or so, so it's a, it's a small amount. 
In order to do that, according to mass construction law, we need to first apply to the inspector general and basically tell them, look, we've got a good solid team in place. Here's how we look to manage the project. We believe we're capable of uh, managing a project along these lines. That application has been prepared, reviewed, and is ready to go. Our project manager, Answer, did most of the heavy lifting on preparing it, and, um, and we're looking to submit it. The law requires that the board vote uh, to submit that application. The inspector general wants to make sure that, um, you know, that staff isn't uh, going rogue and, uh, on a construction process without the board um, approving it. So that's what the vote is. The vote is really just to authorize an application to the inspector general who will then come back um, definitely uh, approving us to move forward with this process. Then we send out a request for qualifications. We shortlist request for proposals. That's when we get those numbers back. And then we interview. That whole process takes about two months or so, and we would hope to have this um, this player on our team uh, in the month of January when when we can uh, avail ourselves of their expertise on construction cost estimating and other things. And the last thing I'll say is this vote obligates the school to do nothing, nothing at all. You can change your mind and not even use this process. By the way, the the Alternative is to get the drawings all completely done, put them out on the street when they're done, and just select the low bidder. Um, we this does not obligate you to you know give up that as an option by any means, but we think that um, going with a construction manager for a number of reasons is a you know, a good idea on this project. So we'd like to at least get the process going so that we have that option available to us. And at some point in the future, again, I'll, I'll say probably you know, early part of January, um, you know, holidays <laughs> accepted, I guess. But sometime in the month of January, I would look to come back with a recommendation on who we'd like to hire. And, uh, yeah, so that's the explanation. All right. Thank you, Bob. Um, questions mm -hmm. from the board? So Bob, can I ask you, I know you've been involved in projects like this before. Have there been drawbacks to going that route in your previous experience? No, there really hasn't. Um, you know, I think that uh, folks will tell you, and I, and I wouldn't argue with them, that in the end of the day, you're probably paying a little bit more because you're, get, you're frankly getting more service. You know, rather than taking the, the absolute lowest bidder who you know, might have won the bid because they decided to only put a part-time project manager on the job or something, um, you know, you're, you're hiring a team to provide, I guess, a little more service is one way to put it. Um, never been a drawback. Uh, we've done it on, I'm going to tell you, every job I've done um, ever since they passed the law in like 2005 that allowed us to do it. And um, you know, there's no drawbacks. You, you, you end up working with a, with good firms um, who actually are looking to do further business with maybe not you all, but with me and the architect and answer. And so there's relationship building and trust that's important, I think, to get good service. Um, how many candidates do you think we would expect to even be able to pick from? Like, do you, is, there, is it a big pool yeah. out there? It's, um, no, I'm going to say six to eight, five, maybe five to eight. Um, we'll probably, we'll probably get qualifications, from, you know, five to eight firms. Uh, and, and we generally shortlist maybe three or four, maybe more. Actually, the, the law kind of doesn't allow you to have too many of them out to tell you the truth. But, um. Five to eight, I'd say. And I know two or three of them that are eager to submit packages. Other questions for Bob?
any uh, board discussion on this topic on on this on this uh, uh, the CM at risk proposal? Hearing no discussion, uh, take a motion to uh, approve the uh, CM at uh, the board signing the CM at risk proposal. I make a motion to approve. I'll second it. So Nick, second by Liz. Uh, Sarah, please call the roll. After getting off mute. Yeah, you're on mute, Sarah. Okay, Bella Gorman. Yes. Ben Hamill. Yes. Don Capello. Yes. Gil Schaefer. Yes. Liz Saul. Yes. Laura Webster. Yes. Nick Porre. Yes. Raul Porras. Yes. Roger Jarrett. Yes. Sheila Kelly. Yes. Tomini Sampath. Yes. And Zachary Oglesby, that's it. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for joining us for the meeting. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm going to jump off now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. And I believe also that I see a message that Jill also had to leave the meeting as well. Not till 6.55. Oh, 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 sorry. But, and yeah. I was just, yes. Jill will be leaving us at six at six fifty five. But um, so back to the previous vote item. If people are, are ready for that, or we can defer till after the executive director report, which would people prefer? Liz, do you have an option, a preference? I am good. Sorry, uh, no, I don't have a preference. It's really uh, if anyone needs more time to review them, then. Um, Please let us know. Otherwise, we can we can take this one up. Uh, I'm still unable to get access. I've clicked on the link. I think I had to like uh, request permission. Oh, I thought I had sent the file. I think. Oh, I got the link. Okay, the one for me should have contained the file, the Google Doc file. Okay, mm -hmm. Gala, I I will also add you to this. I knew I was short one. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't have the attachment. I just have yeah. a link. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll hold till yeah, after let's, the executive let's director report. After. Yeah. Okay, Bella, you should right. be. So actually I'll, I'll hold until after all the executive director, faculty, and parent rep reports. We'll, we'll insert it after the report section of the meeting. So I believe we are done with the vote section of the meeting. And they're on the executive director report. Okay. Quick question before I, I um, share that. Do you all in the packet, did the did Bob's report, his summary of the building project um, come through as, as part of the packet? Let me look at the agenda. So what I see in the agenda is an attachment, a PDF document that says OIG application for review, which is under the construction management at risk procurement approval section. Okay, that's what you just voted on. Yep. That's oh, and it's have. under finance. Oh, is it? It's under finance. Oh, the monthly dashboard, yeah. Oh, I, I just see. wanted to make sure it was there. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, so... Um, while I'm pulling up my report, I don't have really a um, an update for you on the building because I knew Bob had put that summary together for you. That gives you an idea of, of everything that, that he's been working on. Um, it, the only thing I can say is we're right on the cusp really of being able to um, make some decisions about where the gymnasium is gonna be. Uh, there's uh, six spots on campus uh, that, that they're looking at right now. What they're doing is pulling together the estimated cost on on each one of those spots so that we really have a full picture can make a decision on you know where it looks best where we think it's going to you know fit best 
um, and, and how much it would cost for each each piece. So right on the cusp of that, so I just want to let you know that is coming. Um, but other than that, I don't have um, a building update because Bob put that together and the, everything else is kind of in process. So I will share my what with you. Okay. So here we are. It's November. Can you believe it's almost Thanksgiving? Um, I cannot heading into the holiday season here. Um, I, I think that um, if you asked the folks around school and Zach can probably give you some more information, um, people are looking forward to, to these few days that we have off um, coming up for Thanksgiving and then, and then looking ahead to, to the holidays. So I'm excited about that. <clears throat> Uh, this is my overview. I'm going to talk about the community council that we re revived and um, talk about a little bit of communication reminders as, as we go forward, um, you know, as a, as a message to, to all of us, to, to us and to, um, to our families. And then we've, we did a quick um, staff pulse survey. We've had 91 um, folks reply to that, and I'm going to give you some information on how people are feeling that things are going right now. We've got a little bit of razzle-dazzle time and uh, a list of the upcoming events. Uh, you may notice um, on the agenda that it, it says in there that I will be providing SAT and AP state um, rankings. Those are not available like yet. Typically, our board meeting, if you look back over the last couple of years, we've done it the first Thursday in December. And for some reason, I don't know how it, it got put here, but... It did, and they end up usually on a typical year, they, they add these rankings in actually like the 19th or the 20th of November. So maybe they'll be out next week. So I will bring those to you in January. All right, so just a quick um, update about the community council. So we started the community council back, um, gee, I think it was like 2017, 18 when Anders and I first um, started in our roles. And uh, we, once COVID hit, we weren't able to meet with them and there were so many other things going on, we disbanded. And so we, we picked that back up again and put a message out to community with 24 um, parents who uh, volunteered to participate. In the past, we've used this, we've had, the council has had um, a small number of parents, maybe you know four to six parents, a few students, a few, a few staff members. We decided to do something a little bit different this year. Wanted to involve more parents, have more parent voice. Um, and um, in, in, as you see from this, to make it more like a think tank. Uh, and so we had our first meeting yesterday, actually, and it was very, very enjoyable. Uh, we, uh, we met in person of the 24 members. We had 16 folks that came and met with us in person. We were together for about an hour and 15 minutes or so. We have representatives from all grades and from all of the core towns, plus um, I believe Shrewsbury and Framingham and a couple others. And we'll be meeting four times this year. Uh, we had meetings I mentioned yesterday, another one in January, March 2nd and uh, May 4th. And uh, I, you know, a lot of positive feedback from, from the parents who attended. I think they like to be part of um, the, um, just thinking through some of the, the things that we're, that we're working on this year. We talked to them about the AMSA 2025 uh, project, broke them up into small groups yesterday, and we talked about what they think the AMSA secret sauce is as we start to um, really try to be able to write that down and kind of solidify for, <clears throat> for all of us, of, you know, what is the best of AMSA? And what do we bring forward into 2025? And what are the AMSA norms, which is something we also talked to them about and also gave them, um, some, feed, some construction project um, information, some updates. We will be talking to them um, about, I know there's some proposals and conversation happening about, um, you know, do we change the eight day rotating schedule to a six or a seven? And there's a lot of um, conversations around that. We wanna involve them in that. Wanna also involve them in the capital campaign that we're also working on. And uh, there'll be a nice, you know, kind of a secondary group there to, to gather feedback and, and uh, and um, to get referrals from. So I think this is gonna be just a, a wonderful resource for us. And I feel like for the, really for the first time that I've been doing the community council, we have some real 
um, great projects to, um, to involve this group in. They're very enthusiastic and, um, and happy to be working with us. So I have to say I'm, I'm very excited about um, working with them and really bringing them into um, the happenings of the school this year. And, you know, we've, we've had some bumpy communications this year, and, and I think that it's, it's really important for us to kind of acknowledge that, um, that everyone, you know, um, all adults everywhere around the country, the state, the world, um, I think the best word is edgy. Um, I, I remember saying something to my husband not long ago about, you know, geez, I just feel edgy. And he said, you know, Ellen, I think we're all edgy. And, and that includes, you know, our, our students, it includes um, our parents, it includes our teachers and staff. And I think everyone is, um, is doing the best they can to do the best they can. Um, but I, I did want to just remind um, any of those who are watching out in face, Facebook or um, watching this recording that to continue to follow the communication protocol, and I included the link there, this was something that we worked on as a community with the staff several years ago. Um, it's got a nice flow chart on, you know, if they have concerns, you know, how to, what the process is to run through those. And, and then just a reminder once again, because I think it's good for all of us to be reminded that we need to always assume best intentions. Um, maybe we're clumsy with the way that we say something or we don't mean exactly the, the way it came out or an email is, is misread um, for tone. Um, but that it's always important that we remember we're all on the same team, we're all on the same side and to assume that everyone is doing the best that they can. And also to remember that everybody is struggling. Some just a little bit and some are struggling a lot on all sides of the table. Um, and I just want to remind everyone to please be patient and, and please be kind um, throughout, you know, the whole community. So just, just a reminder, I think it's important for all of us to just remember that, um, you know, maybe we all remembered very, very clearly we were living it so um, in such a stark way last year of, of just kind of taking a deep breath and assuming that, that we're all doing our best. As we're running into the second year of this, it's harder. People are, are more tired and maybe a little less patient. So just want all of us to remember how important it is um, to be kind. So um, as I mentioned, we did a, a quick pulse survey um, with our staff. We have about 140 folks that work for us. As of the time that I actually took these results, it was, um, we had 91 uh, people reply. And these are not just teachers, this is, this is throughout the community. And, um, and these were some of the results that we had. I thought that's, that these were, in, were interesting. We made this a very short survey. It was four, basically four questions. You're gonna see the, the summary of those. And then there was a box of what resources can, what else can we help you with? What do you need from us? Um, as an administration. And um, I, the last I looked at about 46 replies, great, thoughtful um, conversation happening there. And so uh, we're going to meet on Monday with Mike, um, Anders, and Amanda, myself to, to address those and, and come up with an action plan. So <clears throat> these results were right up to this afternoon. So the first question was overall, um, how has the school year been going for them so far? And so you can see here, one is, hey, it's been great, it's fantastic. We had 10 people who said it's been great. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, and then if they rated it at a five, it was poorly. There was no one who rated it at a five. I thought that was encouraging. And the fact that about 91% of the staff said that they were doing either really great or they, they, you know, they were doing okay, that, that middle um, you know, number three position. Uh, so, you know, I thought that that was encouraging. What I thought was interesting with this more than really these results, I thought were good. We certainly have folks who are struggling. And, but when I, the next question was, you know, the fall can always be hectic, right? But if you compared this year to prior years, you know, how do you think this fall compares? I was wondering, you know, is it much more difficult for you? Or, you know, is it somewhere, you know, like a typical year? So once again, one was great, 
and five was, it was going very poorly. So I, I looked at this in two ways. So 59% of folks said that it was either going great to okay. So one, two, or three. 41% of folks said that it had been a pretty rough start, either, you know, tough at four or really rough at five. Um, but, uh, but when we look again at, at this one here, even though 41% of our folks have really found this to be a very, very difficult year, especially to start, they still are saying that they're doing okay, right? And so when I look at that, I think, okay, it's been tough for everyone, not just teachers, not just parents, not just all of you. It's been tough on everyone, but, but we're doing the best we can to, to cope with it. And, and I see resilience there, and I, I see a lot, of, um, a lot of promise. And so then it's like, okay, well, how do we continue to support folks? And, and how do we help those who have really had a rough start to, as we get into the middle of the year, um, to, to start to feel more confident, to feel that, that things have sorted out so that they're in a better place. One of the parts that's very important to us is communication. Um, Mike and Amanda have done a fantastic job this year communicating. They have a, an email that goes out every week and, um, and it builds on itself. So when you click on there, you can see every bit of information they've given through the whole school year with the newest information on the top. And so, um, you know, we wanted to, to kind of get a gauge of, you know, how people are feeling about the communication. Uh, we've had a lot of positive, you know, Mike's had a lot of positive feedback on that, that email. Mike Finkel has changed the way that he's doing the newsletter. He, the announcements, I think, are the best that they've, they've ever been. And if you want to get the announcements, by the way, you can go on the website and you can sign up for them. Um, so there's a lot, that, a lot that's gone into that. So we wanted to ask this question, how do they feel? that the communication has been from us this year. And so, you know, 76% of folks said, you know, they rated it a one or two, that's time and uh, timely and clear. Um, and, and so that, that felt good. Three quarters of the folks were seen to be relatively happy with the communication that they're getting. And if you look at the one, two, and three, meaning three being okay, I, is usually how I think about that. About 95% of folks said that you know, we're, do, we're doing okay. So we're going um, to continue to do that and, and continue to refine that as we go through the, the weeks and months. Um, but we, we felt pretty good about that. Uh, this was a question that, that, I, that was very important to me um, and I know that um, important to the rest of the team as well. Do you feel you have the systems of support that you need to be successful this year? And you know, we all have different systems of support and we all work on different teams. And I wanted just to see, you know, do, do people feel like they have what they need? So of the 90 folks that responded to this question, 83 of them said that, that yes, I, I have the systems of support that I need. And that's fantastic. I'm, I'm thrilled with that number. Yet we have seven folks who said that, that no, they, they, need, they need additional support. And um, then we had, as I mentioned, a, a box at the, at the bottom um, that really is, that it, it was great. Um, there's some, definitely some themes in there that we're going to be looking at with Mike and Amanda on Monday and, um, and some, some suggestions. And I think that we'll be able to pinpoint. Then we'll also put out an email to folks and say, if you were one of the, the seven, you know, let's, let's talk about this or talk to your department chair and make sure that, you know, we've, we've, we've got you. Right. We've we've got you. And um, so we can continue to help each other. The other thing was we had a professional we had a half day yesterday. We had a professional development. Um, I thought it went really well. And what we did was we broke folks up into groups, um, depending upon how long they had been at AMSA, how long they had been in teaching. Um, some of the newer folks, newer to, um, to AMSA or brand new to teaching. And we put them in, in mixed groups, upper school, lower school. And what they, what they did was they sat down and they talked about what, is, what are the best practices for classroom management, um, for, for um, support in the classroom, um, of, of the skills that they need to, to feel good. Because we know our lower school teachers are struggling this year with a lot of behavior, right, from a, a lot of, of um, I would say, you know, lagging maturity um, 
in, in the middle school for, for sure, I think due to COVID um, and, you know, student and family stress. And so we wanted to make sure we were supporting the, the teachers that, that might be struggling in one class or two, or maybe just having a, a rough start to the year. And so they put together uh, toolkits and they recorded those in a, in a document that we're putting together for everyone. And then they, they talked about AMSA norms. You know, there's always classroom norms, but we also have AMSA norms. And we really wanted to get those um, documented. And this will be part of the AMSA 2025 document at the end of the year. Uh, what are the best practices that we have at AMSA? And honestly, some of them perhaps have been kind of lost over the years. From, you know, I, I, well, I give an example of, of one because Padmanjan and I have talked about this quite a bit, but there, there used to be um, a, a, a tradition, a, a process where the students would come in and when the teacher started class, they would all stand and they would say, you know, good morning, Mr. Smith. Um, and they would greet, the students would greet the teacher, teacher would greet the students, students would say thank you on their way out. And some of those things are still being done today by some of our teachers who have been here a long time. Some of those traditions have been lost. And I think there is a level of respect that goes along with that kind of um, process. And I'm not saying necessarily that that's gonna be something we're gonna bring back, but we're, we're hearing and we're gathering those um, so that we can all start to have some of those consistencies back in the classroom to bring, um, that that consistency back to the students because they need the, this consistency and they need the discipline. And so um, we're, we're looking at those things that was part of our PD yesterday. And hopefully that PD is going to help some of these seven folks as well to have, um, to, to be thinking about these norms, to have gotten some new ideas. And then um, Anders is putting it all together and we'll get it back out to everybody. Um, I, I'm sure by the end of the week. So that's where we've, we've been um, recently since the last time we saw um, all of you in the last three weeks. And I have a little bit of razzle dazzle for you. Um, so since we last saw you, I know Spirit Week was happening. And uh, the only thing that if you wanna see any, any photos actually from the high school and from Color Wars, there's videos and things on the Facebook page and, and Instagram. Um, but you know, we also do this, um, we start getting the kids used to Spirit Week um, in the middle school as well. And so one of the things that they do is they do a door decorating contest. Now, for those of you who are new to AMSA, you know, each grade has a color and that color follows them um, you know, right up through graduation. And the kids really enjoy that. And <clears throat> so the students, as you can see, orange is sixth grade and all the sixth grade classes, the DS classes, they decorate their door and then Mike and Amanda and some other folks went around and they, they did, um, they judged the doors. These are the three winning doors, uh, sixth grade from Mr. Morgan's DS, the seventh grade from Miss Little, um, who is Amelia Terrell. She got married um, last year. Miss Little's seventh grade DS and then um, Miss Pearson's eighth grade DS, they won the doors. And then they get a pizza party. So um, you can see some smiles here. And uh, that's Ms. Sensei, our vice principal, very happy um, students as they got, um, they got a pizza party for winning their door um, contest. So um, just thought I would show you, look at that, look the face in the middle with biting into that pizza. These were happy kids. So it's fun to be able to do something to bring smiles to their faces. And, you know, Mark Vital is, is always looking for opportunities for community service. So if you or anyone who's listening to us um, ever has an opportunity within their town um, to have a group of students come out to, to do service, uh, please call Mark Vital. Uh, this is our Leaders of Tomorrow. This is a service organization within the school. 22, there's 22 of these, of these students who clean the grounds of the Clinton Senior Center. Um, they've done this two or three years now. And I've, I've been told it's been a great help for the Clinton um, Senior Center. It, it definitely is a service to them and it's a presence for the school in Clinton. Um, and so these students, they raked, they cut brush, they cleaned the flower um, gardens and they did hours of amazing work over at the Clean, uh, Senior Center over in Clinton. They also, um, some of these students, high school and middle school um, 
participated in the Marlboro Veterans Day celebration um, this past week as well and uh, sang um, the national anthem um, right down the center of, of Marlboro. But um, just prior to the Halloween holiday, um, Marlboro, as a tradition in, in the city, does a, a trick-or-treating um, right on Main Street. And so um, AMSA had a booth this year. Another group of students went down. These are Mark's Leaders of Tomorrow students. There's a, over 120 students that are part of this club. And um, he had a group go down. You can see the AMSA Athletics um, the, the uh, tent that they had, and they gave out um, they gave out candy to the little trick or treaters. So, um, once again, a community service opportunity, and hoping to um, you know make the school more visible uh, within the community. Some of our upcoming events that we have coming up: that we have the holiday um, staff holiday party. The PTO is a big player in this. They, they're wonderful. Um, Sarah and Liana and um, in the, in the staff, Lynn McCluskey, all, all plan this for us. I believe it's done at Apex Center this year. The board is invited. We love when, when all of you come down and join us um, and, you know, get to talk to some of the teachers and, and, um, and be visible so that they can get to meet you and see who you are. And uh, then on January 19th, where we have the eighth grade parents night. And this is an, an evening, we're going to do it virtually this year because it worked so well last year. But this is a night where we talk about we talk to the eighth grade parents about what's our curriculum? What does it look like to be an AMSA high school student? Um, you know, what is what's the progression of the math curriculum? And each one of the department chairs is there. And they talk about um, what their what their department offers. Um, if uh, students stay in AMSA through high school, and most of our students do, we, you know, we might have 15 or so that, that may um, head off to Assabet or may, you know, make a choice for private school or back to their home district, but most of our students stay, um, and we want to make sure we provide the inf information to their family so that they can um, make that decision. And then another night that's wonderful for all of you to come to is January 20th is our arts night. And our acapella group will sing and chorus. Jess Bowen will have the chorus there to sing. And the jazz band will also play. Um, our art students will have their art on display. So once again, you're all invited to that. That will happen at the school. I'm very excited to be able to bring that back in person again. And then um, as Roger will talk to you a little bit later about, but I just wanted to, a reminder um, that we have on January 22nd, that's a Saturday, the board strategic planning meeting. This is the annual strategic planning meeting, um, time to be determined, place to be determined as well. And then our next family forum will be on February 2nd. This will be a virtual forum. The last one we had was during the day. It was very well attended. It was in the morning. This one will be in the evening, but once again, will be recorded and um, put on social media and put in Mike's newsletter and all of that as well. And then just a reminder, if you have any friends or relatives or anyone who's interested in AMSA, that we will be accepting lottery applications from November 23rd to the 20, uh, to February 4th. A little later, a little different timing this year, just, so just to bring that to your attention. Any information you need about the, the lottery, about the application process, is on the website. Um, and Mike Finkel and Linda Edwards have done a fantastic job making sure all the information is there. So, um, and if you have any other questions, you can always reach out to Linda. And just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Um, I hope you have a wonderful time, whether you're not traveling because uh, it's nicer to stay at home with your family or you're traveling to see loved ones. Um, we wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving. And I will be heading off to Michigan to spend time with my son, my daughter-in-law, and three of my grandchildren. So I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving as well. And I will turn it over for your questions. Hey, Ellen, it's Liz. I don't have a question, but I do just want to make um, a razzle-dazzle comment, if you will, mm -hmm. um, which is kudos to the fall sports teams. Um, oh, yes. A number of the sports went to post season, uh, you know, post regular season. And the volleyball team just finished up last night. At, I, I believe it was the state semifinals. Quarter finals? I think yeah, they went to quarter finals. Yeah. And then <clears throat> yes. um, the golf team went to states. Soccer did post season. So, I mean, I think we talk a lot about the academics at AMSA, but 
kudos to the athletics because the sports teams. Oh, sorry. And I'd be remiss. I know cross country also, they had some runners at States as well. So I don't want to overlook anyone. And hopefully I didn't leave anyone out, but I just thought it was important to note um, how well the sports teams have done. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Liz. And uh, my fear too was that I would miss someone um, or someone would get for forgotten. And, um, but w our sports teams are amazing. And, and thanks to um, the students, their parents who support them, driving them back and forth, back and forth, and all the coaches and Pete Jones, who runs a magnificent uh, program here at the school. So grateful for all of them. Oh, sorry. You know what? I did leave someone out. The football team, Maynard, actually went to the postseason as well. So I apologize to the football players. Um, and yes, I did leave someone out. So there you go. Yeah, we're getting ready for, for winter sports. So yeah. we'll be getting ready for basketball and uh, indoor track and, and all the rest. Uh, we haven't heard of, of any restrictions, although I do have a call coming up with the commissioner um, on, I believe it's Monday. Um, or Tuesday next week. Uh, it's Monday. It's Monday. He just called it today. So we'll have to see, uh, noticing that the COVID numbers are going up um, in the city, in, in the state for sure. Uh, I will say that AMSA really has has been, not, I got a wood table here um, if you're superstitious, because um, so far we've been very, very fortunate um, on our COVID numbers. Um, at the last I looked, I think we had five um, we're, we're doing really, really well. All different grades. We're not having internal spread. So we're very, very pleased. And thanks to our nurses who have done an outstanding job keeping us all safe. Uh, Ellen, I had a question. There was a call out for substitute teachers. Have you gotten any input or yes. are there applicants coming in? Yes, yes. We'll, we'll always look for more. We'll always take more. But yes, we had three or four parents um, come, uh, come forward. We're, we're very, very happy about that. And, um, we hired, uh, a, a full-time sub that's gonna, that's gonna be coming in as well. Um, and just be, you know, moved around day to day. He's someone actually that's been subbing with us new this year and he's been great. And so he accepted that, that position as a full-time sub, but, um, Amanda sensei uh, vice principal has done an outstanding job managing this because it's been incredibly challenging. I will also say that I'm, I'm watching, you know, the, the absentee numbers very closely. And um, since last Monday, because we Veterans Day, we were off on Thursday, the numbers have been way down on our adult absenteeism as well. Um, so I'm hoping that we've worked through some of the bumps um, and that we have, we have the right a number of subs now we could always use more so if there's a couple folks out there who would who would like to um let us know please reach out to amanda sensei or to virginia burke thank you bella other questions for ellen well thank you thank you ellen that's a great report and good new, good news on the COVID front among everything yes. else. Yes, thank you. Great work. Next up, uh, Zach, faculty report. Am I good? Yep, okay, cool. Uh, I have very little uh, for this evening. I have a note of appreciation of the messages of support from the administration, from some of the teachers just, you know, while things are still struggles, especially in the lower school, knowing that the administration is hearing us and is supporting us does mean a lot to many of the teachers. Uh, there was one passing comment of, especially with the gymnasium plan being discussed, a request that we try not to wipe out the small area of trees in between the buildings. Um, that was just something someone asked me to bring. And a kind of minutia detail about changing the timing of the warning bell from three minutes to one minute in order to preserve class time. That's really the extent of the things that have been mentioned to me. Great. Questions for Zach? So I wonder, and, and I know um, maybe people are more likely to reach out to you when something's not right, as opposed to when things are going well, but I believe last meeting you mentioned that there were concerns and the teachers were exhausted because of behavior issues. I don't know if you have any 
comments or feedback or get any feeling of whether that's gotten worse or better? There's still definitely a higher level of behavior that we're feeling. There are still definitely teachers that are feeling exhausted. What I have heard, and you know, this is, is definitely kind of just sporadic mentions and things like that, the beginning of the second quarter feels better. And that might be, you know, a, a just psychological thing of it being the start of something new. It might be, you know, kind of a, a chance to reorient and some students are reorienting their behavior as well. It's hard to tell really what it is until this quarter moves forward farther. But there definitely has been something of a sense amongst teachers that I've talked to that, okay, I at least feel more on top of things at the moment than I did two, two and a half weeks ago when we were at our wits end. Good to hear. Thank you. All right. Other questions or comments for Zach? Hearing none, I'd like to move on to the parent report. Bella. I have nothing to report. I have received uh, no communication from other parents. All right. Uh, anything, board in general, anything to flag for further discussion at the end of the meeting from either Ellen's or Zach's report? All right. Um, so back to our previously scheduled uh, meeting vote, we had a, we had rearranged things. So we're going back to Liz to talk about the executive director goals. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to uh, look at them at this point. Yep. So has everybody had a chance? Can everybody access them? Are there any questions, comments, concerns? Um, still a comment or just a, a thought or questions. Like some of these things are hard. Are, some of these things are very measurable. Mm -hmm. And some of these are not. So exactly. how, how does that work? In, in the I mean, I think that, and Raul and, and Roger, correct me um, if I'm wrong, the I think the things that tend to be harder to measure are the things that we use the staff survey and the family surveys for and look for feedback where we can. Um, we do, I mean, I would say that we have gotten much better uh, keeping them as measurable as possible but i think there's just no way um you know we're no we're never going to get to 100 percent but um but certainly if if there's any anyone that has any better ideas on how we can make you know a goal more measurable we'd be happy to entertain it yeah and and, and it's a trade-off of how we do because i agree with you some you know these are goals we're talking about and goals should be smart goals that that should be easy to measure but we don't want to miss the chance to use this opportunity to document things that are important in the role. So for example, I'll pick on one that's probably one of the hardest to measure is the building a collaborative community based on mutual trust and respect. We want to make sure that Ellen, I mean, she absolutely does not forget that that is front and center of her role, but given the history and given the importance of the board, keeping an eye on the executive director's role in the climate of the school, it has to be mentioned. Can we measure and say, okay, do we have a trust and respect? You know, that, that's where the surveys come in and there's some, some that address that, but it's hard to say, well, we want 98% trust. You know, we're okay, we're giving up 2%. You know, that, that doesn't really make sense. So that's why I think it, it's hard to balance out measurable and, and qualitative things, but it's worth leaving the qualitatives as a way to give us some, an opportunity to remind ourselves that we should be keeping an eye on those things. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I mean, I, I didn't think of the survey responses, but I think that survey questions could be drafted to help capture a measurable metric for some of these goals. Yeah, and one of the issues, and, and Raul can speak to this a lot more, but one of the challenges we've had, and I know you may have a background that would be helpful with this, Bella, is we've tried to keep the same questions year over year for the survey um, so that we can look at trends, but it may make sense to, to your point, add a couple questions in. Um, and I know that you have 
um, you know, a background sort of in this area where it, it might be interesting to kind of get your input on that. Yeah, I would love to um, provide some support if I can. There you go, Raul, sign yeah, her up. You, you invited to the survey. <laughs> I know. You join us when we reconvene in January because <laughs> you remember the conversation we had, and I forget if it was the last board meeting, we, we had decided to skip the, the poll survey and, and, and actually just to clarify, because Ellen just talked about a staff poll survey. There's a staff poll survey run by the administration, which is different than the fall survey that we that the board um, ran in previous years. So we decided to go back to only doing the spring one. And to Lisa's point, we were kind of hung up on the idea that we want to do trending year over year and all that. And we don't want to fully abandon that, but we also want to make take an opportunity to make the survey simpler because one of our challenges is lack of response. And the more questions we have, the less, people, the less likely it is for people to respond to survey. Yeah. So, yeah, it's almost as if we need a balance of the right. questions we look at year over year, as well as the ones that, you know, for whatever's going on at that, in that particular year, um, we need to ask specific questions around that. So I will make sure to include you when we uh, try to schedule our survey task force because, again, we're, we're going to get together in the new year to plan for the spring survey. So now that I know you have a background in the area, you, we'll, we'll make sure to take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah, one, one more following up on Liz's comment. In the past, the, the uh, fall poll survey was meant to target specific questions that are affecting the community this year and the spring survey was meant to be the sort of the longer term trending one and now we're going to sort of sounds like we're going to sort of merge the two of them together which makes a lot of sense to me but that was sort of the initial ph design philosophy was that split yeah there was definitely survey fatigue there's no doubt yeah. about it yeah we need to, we need to address survey fatigue to get better at, get a higher quality answers All right, other questions on the uh, goals? Just one quick question. I know we've talked, given the buildings and the development plan, about Ellen's involvement being that taking up a lot of her time. So I'm just curious as to why it's 10% on the goals. OK, I'll jump in. Just making sure I swallow first. <laughs> um, Sorry, Ellen. <laughs> oh, that's okay. My daughter is visiting, and so we're we're having a little dinner. Um, <clears throat> so, I I would say that we we focused on. Oh, let me just pull this pull it up. Um, when we looked, you know, educate. Well, all right. So we there's there's a kind of a formula that we've used over the years. Um, and it's shifted a little bit. There used to be a really heavy percentage on the educational attainment, which of course is, we are a school, it is a priority. And yet we also really want to make a statement that we're recognizing the importance of the social emotional as well, making those two, um, you know, equal this year. And, and you know, I mean, that's a real, that's an interesting point. Um, and I think, oh gosh, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting point, Sheila. I, I thought I had, you know, put a can of worms. I was just curious. No, no I think <laughs> it's, a, it's a great it's question. A point. Yep. I guess because we're a school and even though we have this huge project going on, it's still about the kids. It's still about the kids, right? It's about their education. It's about their emotional and, and, and social well-being. It's about the, the adults who work in the school. And although it's a $28 million project, the kids are always more important than the project. And it's just more important. Well, that makes sense, yeah. I, I guess that's kind of, it comes down to. But if you all don't agree, I'm happy to, you know, do whatever you'd like. Any other thoughts on that? Because we're flexible. And, and Bella, I, I appreciate that. We'd love to have you on the committee to, uh, to help us work on next year's goals too.
Right. Uh, any other questions for Ellen or for, for yeah. Liz, for all of myself? Um, seeing, hearing no further questions. I'd like to looking for a motion to approve the uh, goals. Motion to approve. A second. Second from Bella. Motion by Sumini. Uh, Sarah, please call the roll. I'll make a note that Ben Hamill and I believe Jill at this point has left the meeting. Okay. Bella Gorman. Yes. Don Capello. Yes. Uh, Liz Saul. Yes. Maura Webster. She dropped as well. She's not there either. Okay. Uh, Nicholas Poirier. Yes. Raul Porras. Yes. Roger Jarrett. Yes. Sheila Kelly. Yes. Salmini Sampa. Yes. Zachary Oldsby. Yes. Did Maura, did she drop, did you say, or she left? No, no she, she has left the meeting. Okay, then we're good. Two, we're, so we still, just as a quorum count, we still have nine, yes. which is more than our quorum, just to confirm that. And motion passes unanimously. Thank you to Ellen, Liz, Raul for all the work to get these goals and for Ellen for already uh, executing on them. I'm looking forward to a successful year. So uh, with that, I believe we are ready, if Sheila is, for the open meeting law presentation. Give me one second to um, pull up the presentation and I will be good to go. You may need assistance to be able to share. I'm not sure, but go ahead and try and see what I All right, let me see. We can have Sarah or Mike help you out. All right, give me one sec. Let me just. Uh, okay, hold on. I am never the most technically wonderful with this. Share. All right, are we seeing it? Nice. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. It's the little things. Um. Wait, but is this the right presentation? Ah, it is not. Hold on. Damn guy. <laughs> I'm, on my, I'm on my new computer, so there's a learning curve. I am sorry. I'm going to unshare for a second, so hold on. We'll call it a dress rehearsal, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> You're hold still sharing on. at the moment. Oh, sorry. That's fine. I just thought you would want to know. And I there you go. That. You are unshared at this point. <laughs> I just, I'm like the comic relief for everyone at home, hopefully. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting there. Oh, that's funny. I'm a little nervous that that will, oh, there we go. Okay, hold on. Um, now I just need to figure out how to do slideshow, which Raul usually helps me with. So let me share again. <laughs> you can help me. Do you want me to present from, I have the, oh, there you go. Never mind. All right, so Raul, how do I do slideshow now? Oh, wait, I think I see it. But my um, my Zoom bar keeps getting in the way. Is that it? Ah, look at that. All right. Wow. So here we go. <laughs> so that is going to be the most entertainment you're going to get out of the open meeting lab presentation, but it is necessary <laughs> to do this. So here we go. Um, so, I, and I know this is a rehash for some people, but, um, you know, it is important for us to, as trustees, we have this obligation to comply with open meeting law, and there are repercussions if we do not, um, and now you're going to hear sirens in the background, so I apologize. Um, so, uh, just to give an overview, um, open meeting law is a mass general law, chapter 30A, section 19A, if anyone's interested in reading it. Um, but basically what the goal is, is to ensure transparency um, for deliberations um, which are public policy, on which our public policies are based. So obviously there's no question that AMSA 
um, qualifies and that the board qualifies as an agency and a board that is covered by public meeting law. We're a public entity. I know those of us who are parents have to explain that all the time when you say your kids go to a charter school, um, but uh, we are obviously covered by the law. Um, so what the goal is, is to have all our meetings and deliberations be public um, with certain exceptions that I'll get into. Uh, and it, the, um, the open meeting law is overseen by the Attorney General's office, their, their open government division. Um, they're the ones who uh, deal with any complaints that are made by the public um, and make any findings um, in order to remediate those violations. So the, what's subject to open meeting law, and this kind of touches on something that we talked about in last month's, or last month's meeting or the month before, um, so there's four questions you want to look at when you're determining if something is covered. Is it a communication between or among members of a public body, which again, we are a public body? Um, if so, is it a deliberation? Does the communication involve a matter um, within the body's jurisdiction? And is there any exception? So this is why for those of you that are new to the board or new to a board, when we send emails, um, you know, we're not having a discussion via email about any particular document, any particular policy, um, because to do so would be violative of the law. Um, so it covers both oral communication, like these meetings, and like I said, those email um, and written communications as well. So what about executive session? Because we, you know, we've had a history of going into executive session. Um, so if the public discussion is going to be detrimental, um, we can have an executive session. And there are 10 discrete, um, I think I only included seven here, um, circumstances in which that's appropriate. Um, so it's when you're discussing the reputation, character, or physical or mental health of a specific individual, um, when you're planning strategy or conducting a negotiation, like when we're doing the CBAs for the um, teachers. Uh, to provide strategy for litigation or, again, collective bargaining for the union, um, to discuss uh, security personnel or devices, uh, to investigate a charge that could potentially be considered criminal misconduct. Um, and this was the one we were using the most, obviously, was to consider the purchase, exchange, or lease of real property. Um, and then also if we're um, considering uh, or interviewing applicants for employment, um, that preliminary screening process can be covered in executive session. So there are some policies we have to follow when we go into executive session. We obviously need to convene an open session first. That's why we'll oftentimes take a role and then go straight into executive session. And it just is that three minute um, interaction when we call the role. Um, but we have to state the reason why um, and state that state openly that that having a discussion publicly about that would be detrimental um, to us as an entity. Um, and then we always have to say if we're going to reconvene or not, um, and we always have to take a roll call vote. Um, I think what we can get a little too comfortable with is forgetting what we need to do when we're in executive session. Um, and Jill and I have been working um, recently on some of this, is we do have to maintain accurate records and minutes from executive session. Um, and the reason for that is that once that purpose is done, you know, perfect example is the purchase of the buildings, people can request those minutes and those documents. So we do need to make sure that we're keeping um, accurate minutes, that we're having roll call um, in the executive session, and that we only are discussing the matters that are identified as our reason for going into executive session. Um, so what are our responsibilities when we're having a public meeting? Um, we have to announce uh, at least 48 hours in advance, and I'm very grateful to Sarah, who always does that. Um, we are obligated to provide accommodations to persons with disabilities. Um, you know, obviously, they would put in a request, and we would accommodate that. Um, our minutes, just like we do at the beginning of every meeting, have to be approved and made available uh, to members of the public. Our minutes are posted on the um, website, usually. Um, and we are still, so the reason we can do what we're doing right now and have a remote meeting that includes everyone or a majority um, is because Charlie Baker signed, Governor Baker signed um, into law last year in 2020, 
um, saying that we were able to do that. And that has been continued um, during COVID. Um, so right now that's still in effect. Um, that's why we're able to meet remotely. Prior to that, there were restrictions on how many people could be participating remote, but we're not subject to that obviously um, at the moment. Um, other access aspects, sorry, of um, open meeting laws, um, individual, individual has to be recognized by the chair um, in order to address the board, um, just like we do with public comment. Um, and again, we um, can be subject to recording, which we're taking care of that ourselves right now by um, recording and posting live on Facebook. So if there are questions about open meeting law, um, I would encourage two things. One is that you kick that over to myself as governance chair. Um, but there actually is a division, like I said, of open government at Maury Healy's office um, that has a phone number that I included here and a website where you can go and seek advice. So um, I will say I have reached out to them in the past. Um, just like if there's ever an ethical concern, state ethics board, you can call them and say, hey, I'm considering this. Is that okay? You know, um, you know, when I, I did it when I was applying to be on this board, is it okay for me to hold a state government job and be on the board of a charter school at the same time? And the answer obviously was yes. Um, so same thing with open meeting. Um, you can reach out to them, ask them questions if there's something you have concern about. But it is important, I think, since governance kind of oversees open meeting compliance for this board of trustees that if you have a concern that you let me know so that we can kind of track that as well. And, and there may be something historically that we've already dealt with that um, we can then let you know. So does anyone have any questions? Crickets, yes. which I like to um, hear. Yeah, oh, yeah. Raul. Was that a good thing or a bad thing that I have a question? <laughs> no, go ahead. No. Yes. I, I, just to clarify the way you worded um, about releasing the minutes from executive session is that one oh, sorry. That's by request. So by re okay, that I just want to make sure. So it is by request. It's not like we're mandated to release them when the reason is gone, right? No. So what yeah. we do is we'll review, and Jill's been going through that, and um, Sarah and I have been talking and the, the the governance committee have been talking about how to best do that going through and determining what minutes now are able to be you know available and what are not but it is by request so we'll have kind of a bank of you know what's there so if we got a FOIA request or if we got a request we would know what's able to be released um but yeah it is by request it's not posted on the website or anything yeah so Sheila, on boards I've been on in the past, we had to also um, vote to approve executive session minutes. Has that changed? Nope. So we will be doing that. But what we've been doing is going through what we have given the recent, like I said, most of what we have um, done executive session for has been with regard to um, buildings. So kind of going through to see what is appropriate before we send that out. Sounds good. Thanks. So how do you approve them? Because if we're going to approve them in an open meeting, they have to become part of the packet for the open meeting. So, oh, right. that's an excellent question, Raul. Um, oh, Sarah seems to have an answer. Oh, I actually was reading on the site uh, yesterday, and it said that boards can actually decide if it's a full board or a designee, like the chair or someone else. You can have one person, if that is what you decide to do, you can have one person uh, approve the minutes, read them through and say they meet it. So Sarah, just as an offside, maybe that's something we should put on the agenda for governance for next month and talk about and see if we wanna bring that before the board. Yes, I, I took a um, snapshot of that I'll send to everyone. Thank you. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to mention too, and it came up when we were talking about um, task force, I think is those deliberations and that standard really counts when there's a quorum of um, board members. So I think when we're having meetings, we need to be conscious of that, of how many trustees are present, um, you know, and, and look at that as well. But it's not okay. really, if it's a school event, Correct. We have more than a quorum, just that we are limited. We cannot discuss 
as long as we're not deliberating on anything, right? right? So if we're at arts night, we can't be talking about X, Y, and Z, which I wouldn't anyway, because I'd be listening to the acapella group. But, um, but yeah, no, yeah, we just want to be focused on what we're at and not the board business. All right. All right, I am gonna stop sharing. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sheila. You're welcome. Uh, other other questions. And uh, Sheila, please uh, share the slides with Sarah so they can be part of the. Uh, yeah, she has them. I sent them to her admittedly okay. about 15 minutes before the meeting, but yeah. Right. They're in the Great. agenda. Oh, awesome. great. So they're now, now, now part of the public record. Fantastic. And thank you for keeping, keeping, us, keeping us straight with, uh, with open meeting law. It's very important. Um, on the chair business. For chair business, I have uh, only one thing. We need to uh, get together and start, start planning the, or thinking about, thinking about the open, about our uh, strategy session for January. And um, at this point, I think I'm, I'm, my approach would be I'm just looking for volunteers to that are interested in uh, helping us to plan it and then just have a separate meeting for people that would be announced, et cetera, um, for open meeting law, uh, people that were interested in working on the planning of the uh, strategic meeting. Um, I can definitely help with that. This is Dawn. Dawn. Samini, I'd love to have your uh, input on that as well. So, sorry, Roger, were you addressing me? Yeah, I was, was, was inviting you to join us in such since it is a lot of your work. Um, yeah. Yes, that would be great. Uh, to, to, Sorry to join us, that. okay. Uh, yeah. To join us for uh, planning the uh, planning the offsite. So just yes. as a great, um, you know, I think just have just throw out a couple of ideas of things that I've thought about. Just as a, as a seed to say a couple of things I've, I've thought about are um, looking at the results from the previous uh, strategic planning session we had a year ago. Also, looking at the board self-assessment that we did in, well, that was April-ish, a year ago. And more immediate thing that we should be also thinking about either as part of the strategic planning or a separate meeting is that I think we'll need to look at board recruiting. So those are three topics for consideration. And there's probably many more than we remember. We only have eight hours. You know, we have four to eight hours for this session, so I don't want to try to take on too much. So, other thoughts of things that we should be think that the group should be thinking about for the uh, board offsite meeting. Well, I, just to state what seems obvious to me, but uh, I have. I still think about what Samini said last year about making sure we're not starting from scratch every time. So building on the, the framework of the goals that we have already documented and the long-term goals and how we refine those, I would hope that that's how we structure um, the day or the conversation. And, and I would love to pick up on things that we kept saying that, yes, these are things that are important, but now we're going to focus on the buildings. Now that we get the buildings, uh, at least we have a plan and we're executing on that plan, we can put our long-term eyes into other things like improving teacher salaries or you know, everything else that we had in our long wish list. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. Would you like to join us in this planning role? <laughs> Is that what you get for speaking up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Sure. All right, great. 
And if anyone else is, you know, I encourage more feedback. If more people are interested, uh, please contact me and we will pick a date and announce it um, in the early December timeframe. So that's all I had for chair business. Any questions for me? Roger, when you said you want to announce it, you mean post it? I mean, as this will be a, this will be a, I'll, I'll work with you. This will be an official uh, public meeting. Okay. Sarah, I'd like to invite you to join us if you could. Certainly. In, in helping us, helping to plan the, the meeting. Okay. It'd be great if you could, you've got a lot of expertise and exper expertise and experience here to help us. Thank you. How about involving our folks from our advisory board or whatever, what do we call it? The Ambassador. board advisory council? Yes. Yeah. I definitely think that they would be invited to the meeting. I can, I can also look to, I can also look to see if any of them would, if we think any of them would be helpful in, in the planning of it. I, I think the planning of it should more be a board activity, but I would I definitely would be planning to invite the board advisory council to our offsite. All right, I think I'm done with chair business. Um, on to committees. Uh, governance, I understand did not meet so I would we'll skip over governance unless. But um, yeah, just one quick comment. I'm I'm seeing that in the agenda we have the uh, the job description. We did vote. Or I don't know if we voted it, but we discussed it in the last meeting, and I checked that it's on the website. So I I think we're good. Um, one thing that was an action item that I had was to share a committee report template to be used for a consent agenda. And since we didn't meet, we didn't discuss this, but I did share that with Sarah and it's on the packet. So we don't need to go over it. Here's a very simple thing, but um, if everybody wants, wants to take a look, especially if we're gonna try this again for January, the consent agenda thing and how to have the, the committees fill out the report. If it helps, take a look and feel free to use it. Yeah, so I'd encourage all the committees to try it and use, use, it, use that template to report out their December meetings. Any questions for governance? Uh, Liana, I'd like to uh, turn over the, the finance committee report to you to present. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see that? Okay. Yes. All right. So finance. If, if possible, could you just make it a little bigger? <laughs> yep. Sorry. No worries. Um, how's that? I'll try one more. Okay. So on Tuesday, the finance committee, um, met and we went over the October financial statements. Um, for the year to date through the end of October, the total revenue is $5 million eight. Uh, we had budgeted $5 million six, leaving a um, surplus of 181000 And then on to the expense side of things, I'm just going to scroll down. Um, we had a total um, through the end of October expense line item of five million five, budgeted five million five and some change, um, with um, an under expense of twenty two thousand. Um, so, if you take the revenue, subtract the expenses, we have a surplus at the end of October of three hundred and five thousand. We had budgeted one hundred and one thousand, so we're over budget by two hundred and three thousand. So included in, in these financial statements is the purchase of the 199201 Forest Street that occurred at the end of October. Um, this purchase resulted in a capital asset of 13 million and a one-time expense for the financing fees of 223,000. So the good news is that even with that additional expense that we hadn't budget, budgeted for of 223,000, 
we still ended up with a surplus of 305,000 for the year to date ending October 31st. Any questions on the financials? Um, we also had a very robust presentation um, during our finance meeting from our owner's project man manager um, answer advisory. They um, demonstrated how the construction costs for the building project would be handled. And she walked us through her model that she had created and it was very um, thorough and informative and very detailed. All right. Ileana, um, hopefully you didn't explain this while I was looking at the numbers and, home <laughs> and missed it. <laughs> but um, there's two lines there that mention summer school, transportation student programs. Is, are those coming up in October because we're paying things that were incurred in the summer or, or does summer school mean something else? So, so our, year, our fiscal year begins July 1st. Um, and this is through... Um, Oh, oh this, I swear the confused. This is the year to date number, so yeah, that would yeah. yeah. I thought it was just October. Sorry. Nope. If you go to the um, document in the um, packet, you'll see the month and the whole year to date. Yeah, makes sense. Sorry. Oh, and uh, one other thing: um, if you're looking for the um, dashboard that Bob Baldwin put together, it's under the finance section on the agenda. And that's all I have. All right, questions for the on our finance uh, committee. All right, thank you, Liana. All right. And thank you, finance, for, uh, for the meeting. Uh, development committee. Uh, I can I can cover part of that. Uh, ben was had a conflicting meeting, um, so beyond the attached report, there was two two comments from the development committee. First, it was a uh, request from the development committee for all board members to make a meaningful contribution to the annual campaign, and the second item is a sort of building on what Ellen had during her presentation is to. You know, if you ha the call for action for us as board members or anybody else listening, if you can think of people that you think would be great as members or people to contribute to assist in the capital campaign, that you would request that you contact Ellen to express your interest or inform Ellen of people that they, she think that you think would be of interest. Uh, Ellen or other people from development have further comments or questions? That's you know, the, the, the committees coming together will have more information as we get things um, more finalized, but we are we're working and meeting tomorrow morning again. Great. So is it reasonable that is the January board meeting too soon or you're thinking more February as far as when you would have something to present oh, to the board? <clears throat> probably more February. Okay, great. Yeah, because we're meeting early in yeah, January. Yeah, we're meeting, our, our okay. board meeting in January is like right after the New Year's, so. Yeah. Um, so great, looking, looking forward to that. Uh, so development is done. Education Committee, Liz. Okay, uh, we actually went into the meeting thinking it was gonna be a really quick meeting, but we had a very um, good discussion, even though um, Mr. Noraki was not able to make the meeting. And that's why, honestly, we, we didn't think we'd have that much to discuss around the test scores, but we really did come up uh, with a lot of, you know, questions and information that, that I'll be taking back to Mike to get more information on. Um, and we also, uh, one of the things that came up in terms of, of what took place during the pandemic and how the year went, um, and we talked to Mr. Oglesby around 
how, what the grades look like, um, you know, and, and again, this was not scientific data. It was really more of a, you know, just a, what, what he's heard sort of word on the street. But what, what Zach explained to us was that, you know, the students that sort of fall in the middle of the pack, if you will, tended not to move too much one way or the other. They, they really stayed that way. And really where they saw, um, you know, some changing in the grading was really at the extreme. So either the really good students did even better or the students that were having challenges did worse, unfortunately. So that was sort of, you know, the initial, um, again, unscientific database um, feedback that we received around um, the the scores during during the pandemic. And those were just the grades. They weren't specific to the scores because for the most part, what we've seen and Ellen has presented the last two meetings, the scores were very strong, even, you know, during and post pandemic. So I think that it'll be interesting to see where we fall within the state. It will also be interesting to see, and this is certainly a question is, you know, how important are those tests going to be in the future? We're talking about SATs, we're talking about MCAS. Are they going to continue? Um, you know, will they have the same significance? So there's a lot of open questions following the pandemic around those test scores. Another question that we had, um, and, and again, Mr. Oglesby was able to help us out with, was how, what's the counselor use now that students are back in school? And so, you know, he did say that the, the use of, of counselors by students um, are, you know, the, the student counselors within, within the school has gone up, which is kind of what we would expect given all of the challenges of this year and everything that, that's happening. So that was, that was another thing. There is something that I did want to bring to all of your attention, and I'm going to drop the article into the comment section um, on October 15th, Marlboro Public Schools voted for a no homework policy. Basically, what that means is that if homework is given or if it's a carryover of work that's not finished in school, it cannot be a standalone grade. So we thought given that, you know, Marlboro was a big part of um, the AMSA community, it was important for everyone just to be aware of this. We don't think it has any impact to AMSA, but it just is important that everybody is aware of this change in case they hear about it or have any questions about it. So that was that was something new uh, that came up. Uh, the one last thing I wanted to point out, and this is something we're going to be discussing in December, um, but I want to sort of do my own PSA, if you will, for the importance of having student representation on the education committee because we have an idea that came once again from our student rep we only have one this year but she's been very involved and in, and really is a is a sharp young lady and one of the things that she has come up with and and we want to bring to um, the school to the administration to think about is in the may june time frame having the seniors do an exit interview survey. So, you know, we talked about how typically when the students come back in January for the Back, back to the Future, um, they, um, you know, they usually have some feedback, but they're already in college mode. So if we were to gather some feedback as the students were leaving, while they're still invested in the school, it would be great to hear what they have to say um, about AMSA. So I think that we, what we talked about and what we're going to discuss in December is really what are sort of the, the topics or big questions that we would like to gather information and data on for the administration to consider um, as feedback. But we just thought that it was, uh, it was a great idea to, uh, to have a... Um, you know, an exit, similar to an exit interview when you leave a job to get feedback, um, for the school to get feedback from the seniors as, as they're exiting the school. Any questions? Liz, just um, 
I was thinking about the, the issue of behavior, and I don't know if this is a kind of topic that goes into the ad committee or 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 maybe it lies somewhere else. But I would for for uh, running the risk of sounding philosophical. If, if we talk about excellence and integrity being, you know, two of our, our core values, we should be striving for excellence not only academically, but also excellence in character and and showing and, and modeling the, the right behaviors in our community. So whatever we can do as a school, you know, it's not just the school's problem, right? The families need to be part of it, but I don't know if that's part of the discussion. How can we improve our students character or shape our students character to to for them to realize the importance of respect and and the behavior that we're expecting of them as much as we do on their grades and on their understanding of of knowledge <laughs> or just pure knowledge so I, I know it's a broad topic and not probably not something easy to address but i'm wondering if it's something that we should consider more as part of our discussions on things that we can do to improve. Yeah, and that, well, it's a good point because it is something that we did discuss. We, because I think that um, the Ed Committee met, I think the week after our last board meeting and after Ellen had brought up the fact that, you know, the school was dealing with, um, with some behavioral challenges. And then um, the fact that, they were going to um, dedicate the the November uh, professional development to um, you know strategies to to address the behavior. So it was top of mind at the last meeting. But yeah, I, I we can definitely look at that and see if we I'll add it to the agenda for December. Thank you. And there's an impact on. I mean, I don't need to tell the educators then. Behavior has an I don't think it's a big surprise to them. Right. Yeah. And so, so my just uh, as far as my PSA on on the student involvement with the Ed Committee, um, I am going to be wrapping up this year, so I will no longer be chairing the, the Ed Committee. Um, but I would like to say, and I would highly recommend keeping students on as part of the Ed Committee because I think they just bring. Um, a really good perspective and a wealth of knowledge to the Ed Committee. And even though we only have one student representative this year, uh, she's been doing a phenomenal job and really provides a lot of, of great feedback and input. So I, I would definitely continue it in the future. I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> All right, any questions for Liz? All right, so we are done with committee reports. We've had no items flagged for uh, discussion. So we're moving on to meeting wrap up. Um, Sarah, did you review our action items from the current meeting? You're mute. Just so you didn't hear my typing. Um, yes, the only thing that I have down here is to, um, we're going to add uh, approving executive minutes, that process uh, to governance. That was it. All right. And action, you can add an action item for myself to, to create the meeting for the board offsite planning. Anything else that we missed for action items for the board? There were some action items in the development committee report. I don't know if that needs to be um, officially written here. Oh. Can we just re refresh my memory? Is that an action item for the board or an action item? For the action item for the board. Okay. Right. Make donations. <laughs> Make donation. Well, and also, if anyone knew of of someone, uh, yeah. to be on the development, uh, that parent Capital campaign, Campbell campaign committee. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
and eventually we'll be asking for any kind of corporate um, or community <clears throat> connections you might have as well. So put on, put on, put on your thinking hats, and and go ahead and send them early, send them early and off into Ellen. You don't don't need to wait for the February presentation. All right. So we've got uh, so candidate items for the uh, January board meeting. Any any uh, non-standard items for discussion in January? No, but it, it might be worth clarifying if we're going to try out the consent agenda. We said in the last meeting that we should use as a deadline for submitting the committee reports the previous Thursday, which in this case would be December 30th. And I don't know more. I don't know if we want to use that as a deadline or maybe move that deadline like a week before or well, it's Christmas. I, I don't know. Do we want to clarify when that deadline should be? Well, and are, do all the committees meet in December? Um, that's another question. I know Ed committee is meeting and I would just get it submitted as soon after. I'd probably submit it before Christmas, but I would say, you know, which which committees are planning to meet in December? I think finance. all of them. Yeah, finance and development are meeting. And governance is meeting, governance. Yeah. yeah. We're all very diligent. <laughs> so by December 15th, everybody would have met. So if we make the deadline the 22nd, we have an extra week to turn it in and then the, the consent agenda can be shared. Yeah between the 22nd and this whatever that week. Yeah, I like, I like that idea. So having that, you're proposed, proposed for, for our January board meeting that the items for the consent agenda votes and meeting re and committee reports would be in by the 22nd. We don't want anyone up on Christmas Eve working on it. <laughs> and with that template that everybody has now, it's so easy to take notes. Also maybe having the meeting um, Posted too by then would be great. Yeah. That makes sense. Early Christmas present. <laughs> All right. Any other? So we discussed the timing of the planning for the January board meeting. There's no other, and it, clearly it will. There will be in the January board meeting a topic on the on the offsite. So that's an extraordinary item. I heard no other um, extraordinary items for January. And so finally, uh, I think we sort of slipped into this already, a meeting assessment, anything that we wish to, you know, what, things that went well, things we can improve on, things to try for January. In terms of a final time count, we're about an hour and five minutes ahead of our scheduled time. I Very important, maybe, given the Patriots are playing tonight. My only quick comment, and I know that we're all doing absolutely everything we can, is the more we can see um, ahead of time, I think the, the better the agenda items go. So we had a couple times tonight where we were being sent things or things like that. So it's, I don't know who owns that sort of making sure everything is part of the packet um, and making sure, probably chasing us to get the information for the packet, um, which is probably no fun at all. Um, yeah. And I think that's the only thing I've seen so far that we could tighten up, but I think everyone does their best and it's assume good intentions, right, Ellen? Yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take ownership on that one. I think that as, as part of constructing the agenda, I need we need to, uh, Get get that out earlier, and having the deadline of the twenty second, I think, will help us a lot for January. There won't be won't be uh, assembly at the last uh, last minute assembly won't be involved. I think that's where the fault lied. 
Well, I Good think point. it's helpful, like, you know, if you do have questions, I think you're more likely to get them if you can read it ahead of time. And I think in terms of the yeah. public, if they have access to the documents, it's the same situation. So um, I think also this, um, if I may just add this, I think having this meeting a week earlier kind of threw everyone off a little bit, too. And uh, but I will work really hard with Roger to get these things um you know, I will collect. I don't mind running after people and and getting that stuff. We can we can do this. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's only a you know getting better kind of thing going forward. I don't mean it as any type of criticism. So I've been through this many times, and everyone just does the absolute best they can every month. That's all. Everyone's got stuff going on. It'll make it easier for everyone. It will. Yeah, my only other comment is. is um, and I, I don't know how to do this differently within the confines of open meeting, but I probably would have been faster to volunteer about the um, planning, the strategic planning meeting, if I had known it was coming, <laughs> right? So if I've been able to think about it, it's like, yeah, maybe I should consider doing that. It, it's hard to react on the spot. Well, I think you can, under open meeting law, you could send a request or something like that. Or you just can't discuss it, you know, as a group. Right. Like a reply all kind of situation. So I think people can think about that and, and include that. Because I also appreciate that it sometimes it's tough to react when you're in a group setting and you hadn't really thought about something like, do I want to do this or not? I don't know. Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good point. Other uh, meeting feedback? All right. Any other business that we missed? Final comments? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second okay. from Liz. Roll and Liz. Roll with a second from Liz. Sarah, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, Bella Gorman. Yes. Uh, Don Capello. Yes. Liz Saul. Yes. Mm, uh, Nick Poirier. Yes. Raul Porras. Yes. Roger Jarrett. Yes. Keely Kelly. Yes. Salmina Sampath. Yes. Zachary Oglesby. Yes. And that is everyone. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening. Go Pats.